Now we move on to compound lipids, the second uh, category of uh, lipids. Now, uh, under which uh, uh, phospholipid, glycolipid, sulfolipid, uh, and lipoprotein uh, are included. Uh, now, out of which lipoprotein will be dealt in a separate session. Uh, first of all, we can go to see uh, the phospholipids. And before that, this is uh, this is what we have completed here: simple lipids, and we are uh, we are start we have started complex uh, lipids. And uh, this is phospholipids, the glycero phospholipids and sphingo phospholipids. Now, phospholipids are derivatives of phosphatidic acid. We can see what, what phosphatidic acid uh, is. And they are amphipathic molecules also, base, uh, which, which means that they got the polar and non-polar ends in it. And uh, basically, phospholipids form the the integral part of a plasma membrane as we can see here the double uh, lipid membrane the uh, double membrane uh, here this is uh, phospholipid along with the proteins and cholesterol and uh, uh, monosaccharides and uh, this is lipid bilayer and this is a figure that rep that represents a, a phospholipid with the hydrophobic head and a hydrophilic tail now um, this is the structure now, phospholipids are uh, divided into glycerophospholipids and sphingophospholipids. Now, first of all, glycerophospholipids. The, the basic plan of uh, glycerophospholipids is phosphatidic acid, which means it will have a glycerol, the alcohol part. Two of the carbons will be uh, attached to two fatty acids uh, through dehydration synthesis, that is loss of water molecules. And the third carbon is attached to a phosphoric acid molecule, phosphate molecule, phosphate molecules, molecule. Now, in glycerophospholipids, this phosphate will have an attached alcohol. And depending on the type of alcohol present in this, uh, in this part, it can be named, it will be classified, and it will be having different functions also. So, like uh, choline, ethanolamine, serine, or inositol, all these alcohols can uh, get attached uh, to this this position so that is the basis of uh, classification of glycerophospholipids and uh, and based on that uh, we can have phosphatidyl choline phosphatidyl ethanolamine phosphatidyl serine phosphatidyl inositol and so on so these are the most commonest of the glycerophospholipids now first of all first of all uh, phosphatidyl choline which is also called lecithin this better known as lecithin this is the most abundant phospholipid of the cell membrane and on hydrolysis it can yield uh, the the uh, subunits of it uh, main, namely glycerol fatty acids phosphoric acid and choline and uh, this can form citrion having acidic phosphoric acid on one end and a basic choline on the other end so these both of them are present in the same molecule so it can actually form citrions also and these are the uh, yes, these are the uh, functions. Yeah, this is again. Yes, these are the functions shown here. It is highly polar, so it can uh, orient along plasma membrane. Obviously, all the phospholipids are there in the plasma membrane. Significant role in structural organization of protoplasm as well as the um, uh, membrane formation of uh, cellular organelles also. Cell membrane then represent. Yeah, this is uh, this is a unique function for lecithin. It represents the major storage uh, 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 molecule of choline and choline is an important uh, it is important in nervous transmission as acetylcholine so acetylcholine the precursor of acetylcholine is choline so this is a major storage form of uh, choline also in our body so the structure regarding structure so this is the choline part choline is actually like this this OH group with the loss of a water molecule uh, this forms phosphatidylcholine or lecithin and one of the curious points is that uh, the snake venom contains a particular a protein an enzyme lecithinase which converts or breaks down lecithin to lysolecithin and lysolecithin is responsible for uh, hemolysis or breakage of RBC uh, uh, and snake vi victims so that is one point now uh, another Glycerophospholipid is phosphatidyl and ethanolamine. Phosphatidyl ethanolamine. The structure is uh, quite similar to that of cephalin, and this is called uh, sorry that of uh, lecithin. So this is called cephalin. This is cephalin. 
cephalin structure is like this this um, choline is replaced by ethanolamine ethanolamine looks like this 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 is the structure of ethanolamine and be replaced here with the again with loss of a water molecule and what are the features it is structurally similar to lecithin cephalin is structurally uh, similar to lecithin as we saw choline replaced by ethanolamine it can also form citrions citrions we can inspect what as citrion is here like here phosphate group is having a negative uh, negative charge and the choline is having a positive charge so that makes it uh, a citrion just like uh, in the case of um, phosphatidyl ethanolamine or cephalin also here negative charge and this is the positive charge so that's obvious there and the, the, what are the function it's quite similar uh, uh, it, it forms the integral uh, part of uh, all the membranes like plasma membrane cell or membranes uh, the membrane of uh, cell organelles protoplasm but this is especially abundant in brain especially abundant in brain so that is one unique feature of cephalins so and another one is phosphatidyl inositol phosphatidyl inositol will be like this uh, so this is a an isomer of inositol that gets attached to the phosphate group here and it is called myoinositol and you can see a minor uh, rearrangements being the isomer of inositol the the uh, there are there are uh, minor changes at the third and fourth positions so it is actually myo inositol which gets uh, attached to the first fatty acid group and what are the features <coughs> the precursor oh yeah this is the this is the most important point here to be remembered this act as a precursor of second messengers because phosphatidyl inositol it can be cleaved to diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate both of them act as second messengers of hormones and we know what second messengers are we will deal with uh, second messengers in another session now phosphatidyl inositol is an important constituent of cell membrane as all phospholipids are and here serine uh, gets attached here another alcohol this is actually uh, uh, oh group containing amino acid we know serine what serine is so that also does the same thing like here it cannot uh, also act as a uh, citrion and uh, there are other uh, phospholipids also uh, which uh, uh, for example cardiolipin is one of them phosphatidyl glycerol that's the major lipid of inner mitochondrial membrane uh, that is important and uh, the structure is here so this is the structure and another one is plasma logins plasma logins structure is here so this is a curious structure you can see that uh, already there is an ethanolamine ethanolamine so uh, it's, it's, it's a basic structure or basic plan of uh, cephalin the second one we studied among uh, glycerol phospholipids cephalin but in addition there is this this portion also it's an ether linkage whereas this one is an ester linkage that is between acid and alcohol this comes as a ether linkage now ether linkage is a, a, a an oxygen connected to two alkyl groups alkyl groups so that uh, so that's what makes it different Plas plasmalogens make it the structure of plasmalogen is unique because of this ether linkage it is similar to glycerol phospholipid in structure but possesses uh, ether linkage on the first carbon so uh, these compounds constitute as much as 10 percent of the phospholipids of brain and muscles so that is important uh, point to be remembered and we move on to sphingophospholipids or sphingomyelins which comes the uh, comes under phospholipids the first one was glycerophospholipids among phospholipids then this is sphingophospholipids which is also called sphingomyelins and uh, as you can uh, you should remember uh, the glycerol part is replaced by sphingosin or sphingenin as you can see here so sphingenin uh, is having two two uh, sides or uh, two spots uh, one of which will be occupied by, by fatty acid the other by uh, like phosphoric acid with the attached choline also so this is the structure here yeah this is the structure sphingosin fatty acid can see here and then the phosphate group through which a choline is attached but basically uh, this uh, this is having the alcohol uh, sphingenin uh, or sphingosin now, sphingolipids derive uh, derived derivatives of sphingenin. 
spinginous long chain unsaturated nitrogen containing amino alcohol that also you can see here yeah nitrogen containing alcohol here here and uh, sphingolipids contain spinginin, phosphoric acid, fatty acids and nitrogenous base and the base commonly seen is alcohol and mostly it is choline and what is the example ceramide ceramide the yes second yeah ceramide is the best example uh, ceramide uh, 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 form essential constituent of myelin sheath so it's also called sphingomyelins sphingomyelins now, sphingolipids are abundant in blood plasma, RBC membrane, brain and nose tissue. It forms the uh, structure in uh, myelin sheath also. Uh, it has a role in the plasma membrane. So uh, just like other phospholipids, it has got a varied, it has got varied roles uh, as we can see. And then goes to glyco glycolipids. So glycolipids as we can see the simple lipids are over, phospholipids are over and we move on to the complex lipid. Uh, the, the glycolipids which come under uh, next uh, um, uh, under the complex lipids okay now glycolipids obviously uh, they are similar to sphingophospholipids in that they have the sphingenin or sphingosin as the basic alcohol in it but attached to it uh, apart from a fatty acid just like in uh, as you can see in sphingophospholipids there is an attached fatty acid but the difference is that it may have a monosaccharide or an oligosaccharide attached to it so that is so that is what makes uh, this uh, uh, glycolipids uh, um, uh, unique or different from uh, this uh, um, sphingophospholipid so its role as a component of biomembranes especially abundant in chloroplast membrane so that is a curious one chloroplast membrane so that is a point to be remembered and component of myelin sheath that also important especially cerebroside so cerebroside and ganglioside are two examples so uh, the first one i mentioned uh, the myelin, the presence of for the myelin, uh, presence in myelin sheath was ceramide and apart from that cerebroside also was present in myelin sheath so first of all cerebroside cerebroside the structure so you can compare the structure of cerebroside and ganglioside here so both of them have sphingosin, sphingosin here, sphingosin here, and here it's the fatty acid, fatty acid, this is the same, fatty acid here also, but they differ here, differ here, uh, whereas in cerebroside, uh, this carbon uh, will have an attached galactose or glucose so depending upon that it may be galactocerebroside or glucocerebroside but uh, but as for here in ganglioside it will be replaced by a complex oligosaccharide oligosaccharide so that is the difference uh, of uh, cerebroside uh, from uh, ganglioside let us see what cerebroside does in our body now cerebroside is abundantly seen in white matter and myelin sheath Monosaccharide mostly is galactose, sometimes glucose also. So this is gal galactolipid. Uh, it can be said to be uh, galactolipid. Now different cerebrocytes differ in the type of fatty acid part. Obviously, the fatty acid can be different in different cerebrocytes as in the case of phospholipids also. As also in the case of trigly triglycerides also. If the fatty acids are different, the, the, the name uh, or the behavior also changes. Uh, and then different uh, cerebrocytes yeah gauche's disease is an inborn error of lipid metabolism in which cerebrocytes accumulate in liver so that is uh, something uh, clinical gauche's disease with accumulation of cerebrocyte so like in the case of gang gangliocyte also so there are also uh, tay sac diseases there it's an inborn error of lipid metabolism where gangliocyte accumulate in brain whereas uh, here in cerebrocyte it was accumulated in liver Gauchis, this is it is in liver, but in gangliosid, it is accumulation in brain. Tay sac, uh, sorry, uh, in Tay sac disease, the gangliosid accumulates in brain. Now, gangliosid uh, obviously formed of galactose, glucose, sialic acid, hexamine. So this forms the oligosaccharide, and uh, there are hexosamine, and uh, this forms the basic oligosaccharide. And uh, uh, there is obvious uh, ceramide portion with which is having fatty acid and sphingenin 
Now, the reason why I say ceramide portion is because uh, this, this much is the same as ceramide. This much is the same as ceramide. Now, uh, cerebral cortex is rich in gangliosides. So, brain contains gangliosides. Now, we move on to derived lipids.